welcome back. You're watching New ATV, and this is our special news bulletin de dedicated to the Constitution Day celebrated worldwide and here in Ukraine. I'm Antonina Antosha. Welcome. Today, Ukraine marks Constitution Day. The document was adopted by the parliament on the night of June 28, 1996, five years after the country gained independence. It was introduced for voting on June 27. For the second reading, around 6,000 amendments were prepared. After almost 24 hours of debate, 350 MPs supported the document. Within the next hour, you will see how Ukraine marks the 23rd anniversary of the Constitution Day. During the next hour, we'll show you a number of special reports on how the Ukrainian constitution was adopted, how every Ukrainian president tried to change the main laws of Ukraine, and what do Ukrainians know and think about the constitution nowadays. But first, we go to the Kyiv Center to welcome my colleague Oles Gardzhuk. Hello, Oles. I already know that you are in a company, so please introduce your guest. Hello, Antonina. Hello, everyone who is watching UATV at the moment. Happy Constitution Day. As you can see, I'm located in the center of Kiev at the Independence Square. The place is quite symbolic for every Ukrainian and for Ukraine's modern history as two revolutions have taken place here. One in 2004, the Orange Revolution, and another one in 2014, 13, excuse me, the revolution of dignity, basically struggles for independence when people took to the streets to defend this country from the pro-Russian powers. So later on, I'm going to have an exciting conversation with my guest, Mr. Bohdan Bondarenko, expert of the Center of Policy and Legal Reform. Hello and thank you for joining us today. It's a Hello. pleasure. Hello, thank you. Uh, feels quite chilly here, right? Yeah. Yeah. What a fresh wind. Hopefully that wind that infused our government uh, to bring a change with the reforms to Ukraine. But until we continue our discussions with Mr. Bondarenko, I will let you, Antonina, introduce our audience to some background of the Constitution and the history of its adoption. Bondarenko for joining us today. Also, today we'll be in contact with our journalists working live in different locations of the Ukrainian capital. Throughout this hour, we'll talk with Anna Romanovska, Natalia Chekatun, and Pierre Marechko. Hello, guys, and happy Constitution Day to all of you. And first, we go to our correspondent, Anna Romanovska. She is at Justice Weekend right now. The Ministry of Justice organized the event specifically in celebration of Constitution Day. Hello, Anna. Can you tell us about what is happening at the Justice Weekend right now? Good afternoon, Tanya. So, just this weekend features five stands uh, from which visitors can learn not only about Ukrainian constitution's history, but also about uh, the practical its practical implementation. So, for example, uh, they can learn about how marriages used to be and um, how uh, it can be done now in just 24 hours. Visitors can also learn how to. Um, exercise their constitutional right, uh, like receiving free legal consultations uh, or assistance. Ukraine's Prime Minister and Minister of Justice also joined this event. Um, before this, they um, actually um, went to each stand and they were talking to public. And after that, they had informal discussion with Ukrainian youth at the lounge zone with drinks. And uh, at this point, they're expected to um, have a brief press conference. So there is also a children's zone uh, at this event. Of uh, there are quests and different games for kids, and as a prize, they can receive uh, their uh, own um, Ukrainian constitution adapted for kids. There is also an exhibition of uh, archive documents and photos. For example, visitors can also take archive copies with stamps, uh, the law of the adoption of the Ukrainian um, in 
constitution as well as its introduction and uh, the um, act of uh, proclamation of Ukrainians' independence. Also, each visitor can have his own or her own copy of Ukrainian constitution. They can uh, be, um, they're given here for free for everyone. So that's all I have for now. Uh, back to you, Tanya. Thank you so much, Anna. And now we go back to my colleague, Oles Gardjuk. Oles, let's hear what your guest has to say about the creation of Ukrainian constitution and Ukrainian independence. Thank you, Antonina. Yes, indeed. Uh, sorry about the technical uh, mistakes, technical difficulties. That story was supposed to be about uh, the history of uh, adoption of Ukraine's constitution. So we have to mention that the constitution was adopted on June 28, 1996, and it took Ukrainian parliament um, nearly 24 hours of heated debates, discussions and arguing before they managed actually to adopt the final version of the constitution. So Mr. Bondarenko, let's get back to those events and could you please tell us what kind of battle was happening back then? So first of all, I would ask for everyone to take my congratulations for the constitution day. And the answer to your question is really what, it wasn't only 24 hours, it was a really long period of time maybe five years, we can say for three years, with a lot of discussions about true. the different provisions. There were a lot of, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, different meetings between the experts, between the MPs, between the representatives of the president <clears throat> about the new constitution, how it should be, what it should be written there. And at the same time, it was, <clears throat> we talk about the constitutional night, for 24 hours, the process of adoption of uh, the Constitution, we should say that it was only for 25% of the text of the Constitution. A lot of different provisions were discussed previously, and there were a lot of agreements about them. So, uh, it was, uh, if we talk about the process, it was a really big uh, political battle and the conflict between, between the different group, between the different groups, between the, first of all, between the parliament and the president, between their different factions in the parliament, like the communists, like the more national uh, representatives, uh, the like Ruch, etc. There are a lot of uh, different uh, positions between the separate MPs. So, in the same time, we should say that the in the second one, it was the battle between the uh, post-Soviet period and the new period of independent Ukraine, but nobody knows... The know establishment of the yeah. modern state. Yeah, and the nobody knows what is independent, what is new. What, what was going what, on and yeah. how it should be done properly. Yeah. But communists was the, were the largest faction of the Ukrainian parliament of the first convocation. So what was their approach towards uh, the final version of this constitution? I do know that um, they have been opposing the state symbols and the language, the <coughs> Ukrainian language as the state language, and together with socialists, they uh, were even... Um, having some attempts uh, into legalizing Russian language as the state one, as, as the second state one, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so, first of all, their position was next. Uh, they haven't got possibility to talk about this, but they are, um, their position was like, we know that Ukraine now it's an independent state, but uh, Ukraine haven't got the constitution like the maybe some of MPs says the passport of Ukraine and they haven't got any mm, desire to um, like bring this process more quickly to, to take it more like to the, the process of the adoption constitution. So They're, why did they want to prolong it? Um, it was uh, some complicated politi uh, political situation in Ukraine and the Russia Federation at that time so they have maybe some of them maybe wanted to uh, bring the situation back to the USSR in the some different uh, like kind of uh, new 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 Soviet but uh, about if we talk about the provisions about the language and about the Crimea and about the national symbols there were uh, some political um, decision between the communist socialists and etc that will to have the autonomous uh, status of the uh, uh, Crimea 
And uh, uh, for the, uh, another way, we have the, our national real symbols and the Ukrainian language with only, without, the, any, uh, without any discussions about the Russian language like the second one. So it was the really big political compromise in that moment, but uh, also the communists and socialists, they understood that their uh, main task also to adopt the constitution because it will be really complicated to talk with the society and say like we haven't got constitution we haven't got possibility to do it with. when so there was they, no they major should... law in the country yeah. for sure but what kind of document had served as the foundation for the final version of the constitution because some people believe that it is uh, Philip Orlick's constitution of 1711 uh, the other ones are being mistaken about the Ukrainian Soviet Republic constitution how could you comment on that? I can say that it was the, some kind of refreshed old text it was our, and now it's also our own constitution uh, written it from was, scratch uh, it was, it was uh, there were, as I mentioned, there were a lot of uh, different expert meetings, and also the our great experts like uh, Yuskov, Kozubra, Lovati, Musiak, Kalushka, etc. They are the, the, they are great lawyers, and they discussed about the uh, visions, about the values, about the uh, state, uh, about the like, the different uh, powers of the government uh, and the parliament, and also the president. So it was a big discussion, and uh, after this discussion, we have the result, the new text. Mm -hmm. Some of uh, our old provisions were from the Constitution of the USSR, the Ukraine, uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, Soviet Republic. Some of them, as I as I heard, but I cannot say it's uh, it's correct for one hundred percent. Some of them were for the previous Constitution, you know, like uh, one hundred years ago from the uh, Ukrainian National Republic. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, in the results, we have the, our own Constitution, and as I can say, that it's really good text. Um, how is it being recognized worldwide as the format of the constitution, as an example maybe? As we know that a lot of uh, experts and a lot of uh, representatives from the different states said that Ukrainian constitution is one of the best constitutions in the world and also in the Europe. But at the same time we understand that constitution, if, it's only to, if we talk about the text, and at the same time, the constitution is on, not not like the, only the document, the some book, etc. It's the say, it's social agreement, and the social agreement is important when it's, it's different parties uh, and the different bo government bodies they excuse the provisions of the constitution, and uh, the constitution st start to be the value, not mm -hmm. only for the document. So in this case, we can say that the constitution isn't the value for the Ukrainian society, and we cannot say that the constitution. We can say that the great text, but sometimes it's bad realization. You see, here is the paradox. Uh, Ukraine was the last one among the post-Soviet republics to adopt the constitution because it took us five years uh, to vote for the main uh, document, for the main law of the country. But luckily, it is being recognized worldwide as the very effective one. Thank you so much for uh, your thoughts, for your comments, for this conclusion. Let's give word back to Antonina Antosha. Thank you so much, Alas. Thank you, Mr. Bondarenko, for this thorough conversation. Uh, what I would like to add now to the phrases that have been voiced that it took MPs five years to approve the constitution after Ukraine officially gained its independence. The Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine voted for the basic law on June 28, 1996. They spent the entire constitutional night for discussions, amendments and arguing. Here's more about the creation of the basic law of Ukraine. On July 16, 1990, the Verkhovna Rada adopted the Declaration on State Sovereignty of Ukraine. However, the state continued to live under the Soviet Constitution. Communist forces had a great influence in the government. For example, a hundred members of the People's Rada represented opposition in the Verkhovna Rada of the first convocation, and the rest were either communists or looked towards Russia and its ideology. Therefore, there was a struggle for key aspects of the state order of the future state. A constitutional commission to develop the draft basic law was created in the same year. It was published in the newspaper Voice of Ukraine and submitted to a referendum. In 1993 to 1994, the constitutional process was suspended. The Verkhovna Rada ran early parliamentary elections. 
It resumed after Leonid Kravchuk was elected the president. The confrontation between the left and the democratic forces was intense. A solution was made through the conclusion of a constitutional treaty between the president and the Verkhovna Rada. The Constitutional Commission, in particular, its final composition was formed again. It developed a draft of the constitution. In March, the commission approved it and put it up for discussion by the Verkhovna Rada. However, the Verkhovna Rada created its own special commission. It worked out the offered version for the second reading. About 6,000 amendments were made to the document. The constitution was submitted for voting in the session hall on June 27th. Its consideration took the entire day. Initially, the communists and socialists were categorically opposed, demanding to make Russian the second state language. A compromise on the controversial articles on state symbols and language was reached by the morning. They understood perfectly well that both symbolism and the Ukrainian language are key determinants of the new society. Yes, they did not want the constitution at all. After all, they perfectly understood that this is the passport for the new state. The longest confrontation was under Article 10 and Article 20 of the Constitution and the status of Crimea as well as property issues. But in the end we made a decision on these issues. Ukraine's constitution was voted for at 9 a.m. The blue-yellow flag was brought into the session hall accompanied with the anthem, officially approved in the constitution. Reported by Olha Mikhailuk, UATV. So that was our promised report by special correspondent Olga Mikhailuk about the historical aspect of the Ukrainian constitution. And now we go to our correspondent Natalia Chikatun, who is at Kiev's Holosevsky Park. A race titled Ukraine is my native country is being held there with over 500 participants registered to run. Hello, Natalia. Update us on the latest about the race. Hello, Tonya. Kiev's Holosevsky Park really became a four kilometer running track. And over five, 580 Kievans and residents of other cities uh, really changed their, their ordinary, um, ordinary clothes for sportswear. Many also came wearing Vishivankas. This is because of the today's run, which is actually dedicated to the Constitution Day. Actually, 500 people became winners and received medals like this. My cameraman and I did not manage to get to the finish line. However, we received these medals as symbolic awards. Speaking about, speaking about real life. Today we have a holiday and a big day. I want everyone to obey the laws of the Constitution, including politicians and the President. I want everyone to live according to the law, not in disorder. What Constitution Day means for me? It's a day that proves that there are rights and freedoms in Ukraine, freedom of speech. So yes, yeah, speaking about um, nor normal awards, there were uh, some cups which were presented, handed over to uh, winners. And for example, first speaker, we we just had, she um, was the first among women to get to the finish line. She said that she came here not only for running. And I must say that today's run is held in Kiev for the sixth year in a row and organizers also promise to, um, promise to organize it for the Independence Day. Back to you, Tonya. Thank you so much, Natalia. That was our correspondent, Natalia Chikatun, live from Kiev's Holosevsky Park from the run called Ukraine is my native country. Up next, we have a special report about past amendments to Ukraine's constitution. Now, the constitution of Ukraine was adopted in 1996, and in the 23 years of its existence, it was the subject of debates and change. Amendments were initiated by new presidents and parliamentarians with the aim to either limit the powers of opponents or to expand their own. In this story, we bring you the history of amendments, their reasons and outcomes. Let's watch. 
Ukraine's constitution of 1996 stated that Ukraine is a semi-presidential republic. In 2000, President Leonid Kuchma made his first attempt to amend the constitution and limit the powers of the members of parliament by limiting the number of MPs to 300, revoking their immunity and creating a two-chamber parliament with the power to dissolve it. These changes were not discussed in the parliament since the president put these issues on a national referendum. Citizens voted in favor of the changes, but the amendments were not forced into power. The Orange Revolution was the push needed for constitutional change. In 2004, when the tensions were rising in Kyiv, both sides of the conflict agreed for a re-vote of the second tour of presidential elections. This was one of the demands of the Maidan. Simultaneously, a new constitution was accepted that gave parliament more powers. The president lost his right to fire or appoint members of the government, heads of local state administrations, and the prosecutor general. Also, the tenure for members of parliament was extended from four to five years. After winning the 2010 presidential elections, Viktor Yanukovych reverted the changes to the constitution and returned the 1996 constitution in place, expanding his powers. He managed to accomplish this through the constitutional court, circumventing parliament as it is necessary by law. This was one of the main steps in power usurpation. Authoritarian rule caused resistance. The revolution of dignity began in Ukraine. One of the demands was a return to parliamentary presidential form of government. After the tragic events in Kyiv, on February 21st, the parliament adopted the changes to the constitution, and the next day, Viktor Yanukovych fled the country. During the presidency of Petro Poroshenko, amendments to the constitution were proposed that did not concern the political system. The first change was decentralization. After the adoption of the changes in the first reading in August 2015, a tragedy occurred under the building of parliament. Opponents of decentralization threw a grenade at the National Guard and killed four soldiers. The decision was made not to amend the text of the constitution, but the reform itself was continued. In 2016, a large-scale reform of the constitution in terms of justice was adopted. The main innovations are the return of the three-tiered judicial system, the creation of the High Council of Justice, mandatory reattestation, as well as the removal of judge immunity. In early 2019, Ukraine's strategic course for membership in the EU and NATO was enshrined in the constitution. Reported by Yulia Kruchkova, UATV. So that was the report by our special correspondent Yulia Kruchkova about the changes introduced to the Ukrainian constitution throughout its existence. Now we go back to my colleague and his guest Olas. Hello. Could you guys comment on the material, the report we just all watched? Thank you so much, Antonina, for give, uh, giving us a word. Of course, as we saw in the story, the Constitution has been a permanent battlefield for all politicians and for the presidents. Um, within the past 15 years, it has been changed eight times. And uh, if we compare with the history of the United States, uh, in 200 years, the state has not changed uh, and has not put any amendment to the constitution within two centuries. So, how would you how would you comment that? And uh, uh, do you think it's a good tendency uh, for the developing state to change and amend the constitution so often? I cannot say that it's good tendency. I can say that it's logic process and it's normal tendency. But uh, there are lots of different problems because we in the. The time when we change in uh, constitution, when we make the amendments to the constitution, we uh, we, we are in two different processes. First one is the change in the text of the constitution, and the second one we haven't got the the the, the development, uh, the process of the development of the constitutional culture, because the when the constitution is changed like back and forth in this, the same provisions. A lot of citizens look at this person and say, okay, you can change the constitution. I understand that the constitution doesn't matter because there, it's the very big problem. So the you first, mean that they stay careless to the amendments to the constitution? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, like if we talk about the United States, uh, there were a lot of uh, amendments, like more than 30, but they were in the first 100 years. And right. after that. So they fixed everything yeah. and then yeah. they keep using and, it. 
and they understand that they have a lot of problems, but they can fix it uh, without the amendments to the Constitution, but they fix w with the practice of the Supreme Court of the United mm -hmm. States. In Ukraine, we have the different system. It isn't correct to compare the United States uh, uh, constitutional uh, constitutionalism in the United States and the constitutionalism in Ukraine. It isn't correct to compare the, uh, uh, the, the political situation in this country. It isn't correct to compare the uh, process of the uh, uh, social development in Ukraine and the United States. But at the same time, we can say that the constitution in Ukraine, um, mo mostly it changed on, uh, only under the political interests, not under the uh, idea of the change of into the a change. Yeah. So uh, we, we understand that a lot... Um, so it's about the main, political the main bargaining. What? It's about political bargaining. Yeah. And let's start discussing the first amendments. The first one was in 2004, right, when uh, uh, Leonid Kuchma and Viktor Yanukovych decided to, uh, with their initiative, the constitution uh, was changed so that uh, Ukraine uh, became uh, the parliamentary pr presidential state, so the powers of the new president, Viktor Yushchenko, could be limited. And then uh, in 2010, when Yanukovych uh, was elected as a president, he kind of reversed. Uh, that direction um, and his own interest, right? And then in 2014, uh, when the revolution of dignity was happening, we kind of reversed again. So Ukraine is parliamentary uh, presidential republic. What model do you think is the most effective for uh, the modern state like Ukraine? So first of all, we talked uh, about the... Um the kind of the, the the chapters of the constitution which are uh, related to the powers of the different uh, and, and the m most important uh, institutions like the parliament the cabinet of ministers and the uh, presidents so we talk about the semi presidentialism um, the, the, one of the interesting things that the, all these amendments, 2004, 2010, 2014, there were the constitution was changed in the unconstitutional way. All of these amendments were unconstitutional, but uh, there were some, there were different situations. For example, to compare 2010 and 2014, but in the same time we we can say that it's, uh, it's the the one of the biggest problems. So if we talk about them. Uh, the text of the constitution, it's one thing, but if we talk about the process of the constitutional amendments, it's another also important thing. So how we change the constitution, how they, uh, our Ukrainian citizens, how they involved in this process. So we haven't got answers uh, on this question, maybe the new, presidents ha uh, new president have. But if we talk about the type of the semi-presidentialism, on my own opinion, on this moment, the best thing for Ukraine is the parliamentary presidential republic. But uh, the, de facto, we haven't got in Ukraine now the parliament presidential republic. The president is more uh, biggest uh, institution. It's more influential? Yeah, it's more influential mm -hmm. if it, we talk about the parliamentary presidential. So the president you... has a lot of different powers which are not regulated by the, by the constitution. In the same time, it has a lot of different provisions we can, <laughs> which he can use to influence on the competition mm -hmm. of the parliament. So basically his um, official authorities might be limited, but in practice um, yeah. he gains a lot of powers and a lot of influence onto different institutions. But could you explain our international audience why this uh, parliamentary presidential form of governance would be more efficient for Ukraine? Why do we need to bet on the parliament? Okay, if we talk about the semi-presidentialism and types of the semi-presidentialism, we talk about the model. So the model can be good for different countries in the some uh, uh, some period of time. So the presidential uh, republic, we know that it's in United States, uh, some kind of it's in France, and they have uh, a good situation with the constitution. Uh, we, have, we know a lot of examples with their parliamentary republics where when they are really success. But in Ukraine, we have a lot of uh, different tendencies uh, which we should say you know, under this moment. So we are post-Soviet country. In the post-Soviet countries, there were a lot of uh, um, 
examples when they established their presidential parliamentary republic and after that it starts to be presidential republic sometimes it's yeah. uh, like a monarchy yeah like some kind of monarchy let's remember Kazakhstan <laughs> yeah yeah and a lot of different east countries right. so uh, no, that's why we can say that the presidential republic for Ukraine it, maybe it ha has a lot of problems but, but like, like mm -hmm. the model in the same time the um, parliamentary republic we haven't got the parliament exactly like the parliamentarism it's 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 absence in ukraine so uh, we can see in our Verkhovna Rada and we can see the, the parliament, some, some kinds of different factions, they, they don't understand that they are the parliament in mm. our country. So uh, we are really young to have, uh, you, I, I say the Ukraine is really young to have the parliamentary republic. So if we have the semi-presidentialism, this kind of republic, it's, uh, we say that the president has some different powers, the parliament is leading the situation, but they, they have more powers, but in the same time it's the kind of the balance. Uh, and uh, maybe it will be better for us, but the semi-presidentialism has also the problems. Sometimes it's ineffective. And it's, it's good, like we haven't got the, uh, the possibility to have the monarchy, mm -hmm. but in the same time, the, a lot of uh, different decisions starts to, uh, like, it, it, it's take more time to, uh, to put some decree or to adopt a new law, because there are a lot of discussions about the, a lot of different centers of influence. But in the same time, it's not, the, it's not only the problem of the model of the summer presidentialism, sometimes it's the problem of the Ukrainian society, because the, our parliament is also, they represent Ukrainian society. Of course. As I understood, Ukrainian parliament should, should, um, some, somehow get an education how to behave like, like a political elite yeah. and then we also uh, so the should... The problem of the whole political system, not only by the parliament. And uh, when the situation, when the one person t uh, takes decision on the future of Ukraine, like in the presidential uh, uh, countries, it's... Uh, that might could be, be a threat. Yeah, because the political system, which, uh, w which we talked about, the problems of parliament, these, the same problems are in the presidential elections. So Ukrainian society Society, they uh, vote for the some different political parties, but they also can vote for the president. And the risks are more in the situation when the, we talk about the presidentialism mm -hmm. and we talk about the only one person who make a decision. So if we have 450 people who make uh, some decision, the risk uh, maybe not, not, not so big. Well, Ukrainian society is still in the process of uh, getting more aware of all these uh, peculiarities of these processes. Luckily, we have uh, a parliamentary presidential republic. So, uh, coming back to the topic about the amendments, uh, in 2019, we know uh, in early 2019, uh, Ukraine has enshrined its uh, course towards the European Union and uh, NATO membership. We know that uh, uh, some of the reforms uh, uh, failed to to be put to the constitution, for example, decentralization. What is your take on this? When the reform, the modern agenda, the modern direction is being put to the supreme law? Um, there are a lot of Does different... Does it make it irreversible? That's what I mean. Does it make it irreversible, the change? Because as far as I understood, the regime was kind of um, scared that the next regime, the next government would reverse the process of changes. Uh, if you talk about the decentralization, it's like more acceptable your words for this situation because uh, on this moment, like to say the truth, in this moment we don't know what will be changed in the constitution because the president is only established the commission. We should work with these amendments. We don't know who will be in this commission. And after that, we don't know what ideas will be represented among these people. So it's very, very complicated to say, but if we talk about the, the process of the constitutional amendments in the part of the decentralization, it was also the very big and problematic thing in August of 2015, because uh, a lot of people talked not about the decentralization, they talked about the war in Ukraine, because our peace made some bad thing with this uh, bill uh, on the uh, like uh, on the law to, on the, uh, the amendments of the constitution so if you talk about uh, decentralization the process started but they really the new parliament should change the constitution in this part and to, to make this process more faster in the same time and more legal if you talk about the euro integration course it's uh, 
I have um, like I don't think it was really good to change our preamble of the constitution with the constitutional amendments with euro integration and NATO course of Ukraine because it haven't got real influence on the process of our euro integration. But well, let's, keep, let's see what happens afterwards. I mean, sure. this has been just enshrined, so let's see uh, what kind of results and outcomes it's going to bring. Uh, so far, I thank you for your comments. I have to uh, put uh, uh, some ellipses on this and give the word back to my colleague Antonina Antasha to the studio. Thank you so much, Oles. That was my colleague Oles Gerdjuk and his special guest, Bohdan Bondarenko. We will hear more from them shortly. And now we'll go to our correspondent Pierre Morechka, who's working live at a sports competition organized for war veterans in Kiev Center. Hello, Pierre. Can you tell us about the event that is being held? Hello, hello. Da, 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 da. Hi, Pierre. Ah. Hello, Antonina. Uh, Constitution Day is, of course, a public holiday here in Ukraine. And uh, despite uncertain weather, dozens of people have gathered here near uh, People's uh, Friendship Arc in Kyiv in order to attend to a special event dedicated to uh, veterans. Uh, basically, uh, many activities are being held here, including sports competitions uh, dedicated to veterans who have received physical injuries uh, during the war. But let's take a listen to uh, Yevgen Oleksenko, who told us more about the event itself. This is a veteran tournament for those who were injured during the anti-terrorist operation. The goal of this tournament is to engage as many veterans as possible in sports and you could also call this a preparation for the Invictus Games that will be held in The Hague in the Netherlands. I myself took part in the Games in Sydney in 2018 and won a silver medal in powerlifting. I was invited here by uh, our volunteers, volunteers to participate in this game and I, I support and uh, encourage as many as I can, as can be all brothers uh, in arms, you know, and we support each other in order to be stronger, to continue our fight, in order to, to, to build a real democratic country, free country, Ukraine, we say new Ukraine, you know, without any corruption. And we would like to, uh, to end the war with victory against Russia, you know, it's a hard way. We were not ready to, to fight, to compete. But every day we are getting stronger and stronger and uh, I am happy to say that all my brothers, they are support. Uh, unfortunately, they are not uh, uh, ready to fight against. As you know, veterans reintegration is a very important topic uh, here in Ukraine. And uh, according to the organizers of this event, uh, Constitution Day is the right time to pay tribute to those who defend the sovereignty and the integrity of uh, Ukraine um, in, the, in the East. Um, but let's take a listen to my Major General Yor. Ordichuk, who told us more about the importance of uh, veterans' reintegration. Uh -huh. So, this special event will uh, continue uh, throughout uh, the day uh, with uh, sports competitions, of course, but also uh, lectures and uh, master classes. Um, so, uh, well, I wish you a happy Constitution Day and uh, back to you, uh, Antonino. You too, Pierre. Thank you so much. That was our correspondent, Pierre Marec, go live from the sports event held for war veterans. And now we go back to some other news this hour. 
President Volodymyr Zelensky has called on Ukrainians to know, respect and obey the Constitution. He suggested that citizens record short videos talking about one of the document's articles. The president published his video on his Facebook page in a statement dedicated to the Ukrainian Constitution. Let's take a look. I'll start with myself. A person, their life and health, dignity, inviolability and safety are recognized as the highest social value in Ukraine. Article 3 of the Ukrainian Constitution. Join our flash mob. Hashtag my favorite article. Decentralization should be incorporated in the Ukrainian Constitution. Prime Minister Volodymyr Grossman stated this in his holiday greetings. He quoted a paragraph from the first section of the Constitution of the Ukrainian Republic of 1918, which granted the right to self-governance. Let's take a listen. The highest value is a person, their life, health and dignity. This principle, stated in the Constitution of Ukraine, determines our every step and decision. Happy Constitution Day! Celebrations of the Constitution Day are happening across the whole of Ukraine. In Lviv, official ceremonies started with floral tribute to the monument of Mikhailo Grushevsky, a Ukrainian politician who was announced Ukrainian who has announced Ukrainian independence in 1917. After citizens marched to the monument of Vyacheslav Chernovil, one of the key politicians that achieved Ukraine's independence in 1991. The march was accompanied by the Sahai Dachny Military Orchestra. The official part will conclude with a ceremony near the Taras Shevchenko Monument, Ukraine's most widely recognized poet. Then, an official part will begin and the celebrations will continue with concerts, fairs, folk festivals and charity events. On Ukraine's Constitution Day, we spoke with some residents of Ukrainian cities that had endured occupation. They know the feeling of their constitutional rights being violated like no other. Let's listen to what they have to say. I know this pleasant right, stating that a person has the right to a good life. All the natural resources, all minerals belong to the people. What we extract from the earth also belongs to us, meaning gas and oil. The right to life, the right to freedom of conscience, the freedom to choose your religion, the right to the inviolability of the home, the right to freedom of movement. The right to education, the right to decent work and retirement. A citizen in our country has the right to work, to rest and to receive reliable information. The right to life, the right to freedom of movement, the right to rest, to work, the right to a proper level of social security. The right to life. This is one of the most important among those that a person has. Also the right to the freedom of speech. When these unrecognized republics controlled this place, when they tried to establish their rule here, my rights to freedom of movement were violated. Also, my rights were curtailed when they imposed a curfew for a certain period of time. We were forced to leave our home and flee because it was a time of conflict. We worried for the life and health of our children. The right to life was violated. No one has the right to take the life of another person. These things that started to happen here back in 2014-2015 clearly were a violation of people's constitutional rights. This prompted us to reconsider and give a second thought to how valuable our rights are, to realize how important they are, all these rights granted by our constitution. I would very much love for us all to have our right to work properly granted, because the entire infrastructure of Donbass has been destroyed, and we would like our Donbass to live. I would like things to change for the better, our rights to be better protected, so that every person could live, work and develop. If every citizen realizes that the Constitution as basic law that has to be implemented in every aspect of life in civil society, our country will prosper and have a bright future. The Constitution holds value that belongs to everyone and that everyone can use. 
At the same time, everyone should know and understand what to do if his or her rights are violated, what mechanisms are there to protect citizens' rights. They didn't allow me to live in my hometown. I would like to go back and live there, to live like I did before. Those were the people from the occupied territories talking about the violation of their constitutional rights. We right now are coming back to my colleague Oles Gurdjuk and his guest Bogdan Bondarenko. Oles, what do you and your guests have to comment about what you've just saw and heard? Thank you, Antonina. Yes, Mr. Bredorenko, so how could you comment on the story? How much are Ukrainians, not only in Donbass, not only on occupied territories or people who had to flee those territories of uh, Luhansk and uh, Donetsk regions and also occupied Crimea, uh, but the, the whole Ukraine, how much people are aware of their constitutional rights and obligations nowadays? We haven't got the good awareness of Ukrainians about the Constitution, about also the text of the Constitution. We have a lot of uh, different information, uh, socio sociological information also, about the, um, about the questions how many people in Ukraine, for example, previously read the Constitution. They have and, not read the Constitution, yeah, yes, actually. And the situation in the 2015 was very interesting because we have the same, uh, amount, uh, of same, same amount of people in, in 2015 in 2019 till now. Yeah, let's be more yeah. precise about this research. This is ex uh, exactly the study conducted by the Democratic Initiatives Foundation and the Rosenkov Center, and it says that 47 percent of all Ukrainian citizens did not read the Constitution, but at the same time, 67 percent of the whole population is supporting the idea of amending the Constitution. So basically, for sure, some of those people have not even read the Constitution, but they are ready to amend the document. It's what does it signal to us? Signal that the information propaganda in Ukraine is really um, has, been has effective. a yeah really big influence on. Okay, the, how should we confront it? Should we establish some kind of educational courses for schools? Maybe should it be taught on the level of uh, um, some secondary school, or should it be taught much earlier, or should it be taught to students or high school pupils? So first of all, we should start from the beginning that the all people, not only in the like not not not, not children, but adults should read the Constitution. Like It will be more simpler to talk something about the, the text of the Constitution, the amendments, etc., when we will start to read it. After that, and I, I, I want to say only one small thing, that the, uh, the, the information from 2015 was the next, that more people in Donbass, it was the more, more bigger amount of people who read the Constitution if we compare on the average per percent in Ukraine, so after the war. So after the war, the people start to understand that we should understand what is happening now, and they started to read the constitution. They want, yeah, they, they want had to a understand. need to understand yeah. their rights. It was the necessity of uh, these people to read the constitution. So, but if you talk about like in the normal regime, sure, I agree, it should be started in, not only in the secondary school; it should be more earlier. Some of the the people, uh, the uh, adults, the people who work in schools, they, the teachers, they should express and make it possible to understand for the children what is constitution. It isn't necessary to read all constitution. There are a lot of uh, really complicated things there and uh, it is impossible for children to understand that. But they should understand principles and they should understand the values and the value of the constitution like the, another thing. But so, how would you explain this to the child? We should talk about, we, we, should, we should explain our children that we have the constitution. We should explain why it was established, why, why it was adapted, but why the, we established the these constitutional uh, things like the president, why we, why we need them, mm -hmm. why, we, why we need the laws, why we, why we should like, have the parliament, why, what is elections. We should uh, uh, explain for the children how it's happening, because we have the situation after the universities, a lot of people who have uh, great education, they cannot explain how our society works. It's a very big problem. And that's why we, like, a lot of people, for example, if we talk about the previous elections, we, we understand that uh, people don't know what is the uh, powers of the president, what, he, what is his competence. So this time it's a really influence also on our life. Because after that, when we, when we think that the 
president uh, has the influence on the great influence and economy, we like elect the president because we know that he, like, on our opinion, we know that yeah, that uh, he will change some things in economy. It's a bad thing because this is uh, the competence of the parliament. But a lot of people who were who put their vote in for the different candidates, not only for the, this president but the previous one, they they think that it will be changed by him. But at the same time, it's only the competence of the parliament. And on, on these things, we should talk only uh, also with our children, also with uh, in the schools. And the first one, we should talk with the teachers. Because a lot of teachers, they are also the Ukrainians. And some they of them... They could be among have, those 47% that yeah. have never read the Constitution. Yeah. But it's a big problem. Um, Let's dive into more, more a little bit into our past. I remember myself when I was a kid, I couldn't understand the hard word constitution. That seemed something big to me and something blurry. I couldn't really um, understand the definition of this word. So I couldn't understand that this is some, somehow a contract between the population and the state. Um, what about you? How did you understand this? How were you taught in school how to understand this? Like maybe the same. Uh, the, the process. I, I was in grade school. And I have a, a really great teachers. But at the same time, understand that it is complicated also for teachers to explain with this etymology, this what, what is this definition really with the constitution. So then, our, and in my childhood it was the same situation. It starts to be uh, after that when I passed all my exams and after when my study in the university, I start more have to more information about that. But uh, our our aim is next. We should make the constitution more simpler thing for people for understanding. If we will make this, it will be more easier to talk about the parliament of the president etc so if we make the constitution not some abstract thing but the real thing and simple thing for understanding for the people after that we can talk the more the more complicated things for sure and the last word briefly maybe you want to deliver some message may to the international audience maybe you want to congratulate ukrainians on this occasions and only it's, it's very complicated to congratulate uh, the international audience for the no, Ukrainian constitution. Not really Ukrainians, day, but, but deliver same, a message to the international audience. Like, uh, the message may be maybe the next, that now we're in the, this year and next year, so we will have uh, a lot of change in, in some, some different amendments, not only for the constitution, but in our social life. And uh, like we don't know what will be happening in the future, but like please uh, be interested in our life because we are interested in your life also. We, the, we are the part of the big Europe and uh, I, I believe that Europe will be more stable than now. Thank you so much, Mr. Bondarenko. Thank you for your time and for the valuable comments that you shared with us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, from the heart of Kiev and from my heart also, happy Constitution Day to every region, every city, town or village and every person, every Ukrainian, and to you, Antonina Antosha. Thank you so much, Oles. Happy Constitution Day to you, too. That was my colleague, Oles Gardjuk, speaking with his special guest, Bogdan Vantarenko. This concludes our special news bulletin dedicated to Ukraine's Constitution Day. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. For more information on the celebrations of the Constitution Day in Ukraine, you're welcome to check our official website uatv.ua or search our media pages on Facebook, Twitter and uh, YouTube. Just type in UATV English. I will see you at 2 p.m. Please stay tuned for the latest developments on the celebrations of Ukraine's Constitution Day. Take care.